Recording in progress. Arthur, we we are uh, now recording, so um, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> <laughs> I guess a logical, from my point of view, I guess is uh, the beginning of your your journey. Like, I'm I'm curious. I, I I've read that you're you were born in Detroit, and uh, I'm curious that uh, how how did you get into uh, you start this journey? I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess from the beginning, from the top, one would say. Well, let's see. Uh, <laughs> my parents are Irish immigrants. Um, I grew up in Detroit with six brothers and sisters and a passion for piano. Mm. Um, playing from an early age, my dad's best friend played like, in bars and clubs all over town. Didn't read a note of music, but he was like my big mentor growing up. Tell me how important it is to, you know, notes are fine, but to trust your ear to see yeah. something, what does it mean to you? You know, all kinds of three-dimensional stuff, which was really cool. Uh, I started playing professionally at 17, um, played in a bunch of Motown bands, uh, which was really an honor. You know, um, Barry Gordy left before my time, he left for LA, but all these uh, guys, that these studio guys were still there. Yeah. Doing weddings, doing bar mitzvahs, doing bars. And, you know, I was in a couple of bands where I was the only white guy uh, and just learned so much uh but doing that you know playing and playing gigs and gigs and gigs and not just about music too you know it's uh you're you're 17 years old and uh this 40 year old at the time was like this old person yeah. <laughs> has five drinks and starts telling you about life you know it's uh it's anyway i could go on and on and then uh but my parents were like look you know we're irish immigrants you got to work here music i don't see it that's you know, what are you gonna you're, you're serious you know you're six brothers and sisters uh yeah uh, yeah it's the only thing I want to do. I just love music so much. Uh, I was finishing up my undergrad in Michigan and he said, okay, let, let, let's do something. New York is the best place in this country, if not the world for music. Apply. If you can get in, maybe maybe we'll talk. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I got in the New England Conservatory. I, I got into Manhattan School of Music where I ended up going, wow. uh, right. which is for masters in classical piano because my parents were like, you've got to play classical. You've got to be, really, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and I got in, fortunately, but what my parents didn't realize, and really didn't hide at the time, the concert, it's 122nd in Broadway, in Morningside Heights, and, and you know, we're talking late 80s, 90s, it, this neighborhood was, you know, as you know, uh, Dominican, um, Puerto Rican, uh, Colombian also, and, and for me, it was like, wow, this, you know, I come from playing all this Motown stuff, and then I'm like, God, this La Pachata, the Salsa, Merengue, that is so cool, I can, I can do this, something like this. Uh, so I, I started, you know, playing gigs just like I was doing in Detroit, but with more Latin tinge stuff. Yeah. And, and that, that's kind of how I started. My mom started calling me Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde because I was like, you know, you're all day long at the conservatory. And then at night just, hey, <laughs> playing Latin. Yeah. <laughs> It had this crazy wow. idea, you know, okay, this gringo, Irish gringo guy, maybe I can make a fusion, do something completely different. And uh, wow, that's where I am now, still doing it. That's, that's crazy. It, no, I, I was kind of curious, like, like you know, just um, this identity of, like, you know, being a Detroit kid, going to New York, and then get it into the, the Latin music and the Latin sound. It, it's, uh, and continuing that and, and growing that in, into that base. Uh, it, it was like, huh, how do you do it? <laughs> I guess so. Uh, it, it, it's a, a cool journey, it sounds like. Um, did, um, did you immediately have access to a piano when you were young? Uh, I, I was did. kind of curious, like how you picked up piano comparatively, I know most, persons I've talked to you kind of picked up a guitar because it's kind of, you know, it's accessible, I guess, more than like a piano, I guess. But um, how, how did you get into the piano specifically? Well, my parents weren't musicians, uh, but they love music. Um, and so when I was six, you know, uh, my dad's like uh, three days before Christmas, he bought a little piano as a family Christmas present. Mm. And, so, and then his friend came over, the guy that played pro, and this guy sat down and... <laughs> just started playing and out my brothers and sisters were dancing around the room and Robert I was like in a trance like just standing right next to and he played like two hours and I, I just couldn't you know it's kind of like it chose me it was like a boom um, and to this day it's just it's you know it's a challenge it's a my best friend it's my mistress it's my you know psychologist it's it's, it's like everything yeah yeah oh that's 
That's amazing. I, I have, uh, you know, I, I found my, my kind of passion with the pho photographic and, uh, you know, into arts a bit later, you know, um, when I was, you know, 31 and, and now uh, <laughs> when I picked up and actually moved to New York from Boston. So uh, I'm always so inspired by people who just like, this was, this was my medium, this was my uh, instrument and just continued it for, you know, since the you know, youth to, you know, adulthood and just continuing onward. So that's, that's amazing. It, it's amazing. Um, it, it just amazes me, I guess, maybe not yourself because you're just, you've played all your life. It, it's, um, it's cool. Um, I don't know where, so <laughs> I'm sorry, hitting a blank and it, it happens to me. Um, I guess, so you graduated from, um, you know, your master's in, in, at the, um, in Manhattan. And then how did you, how do you begin your career as a professional musician, I guess? Well, I, I, you, could, you could, an argument could be made that I guess I got my PhD in, in Musica Latina in the streets of New York. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And then I'm like, you know, I remember one day though, I was at the bus stop. I was going uptown to Washington Heights to, to, to play. And it was April, one of those days where it's like freezing rain. And my hands were just like, I had gloves on, but you know, it's like, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to California. I'm going to LA. LA's got a great scene as well. So with this crazy idea, you know, um, you know, that wow, I, I can mix, I can do that. But I didn't really, in retrospect, I knew what kind of what I wanted, but not really. It took developing and developing. And I just knew inside really what I wanted. I wanted to do something different. You mm -hmm. know, I wanted to do something, a lot of pianists, you, you interpret, the average, oh, he's a great interpreter of someone else. But what can it, what can, I was always thinking, what can I do that's, that's different, that hasn't been done before? So I moved to LA, I was playing all over town, luckily, uh, you know, uh, supporting myself. Uh, uh, and I had a band, I was playing six nights a week, uh, doing demos and demos, but for probably for six years, like nothing. I mm. got as far as playing the club level, and then the labels, it's just, you know, it's, it's hard. Yeah, um, yeah. And so then I, I, at that point, you know, Miami was really opening up in the late 90s. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm going to move to Miami. That's, yeah. And then imagine I'm in Miami less than one year and I get signed by a label in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense, right? <laughs> right. Six years in LA, I'm pounding the pavement like with nothing. And then I go up here less than a year and I get signed in LA. <laughs> now, so... Could you like identify what you picked up, uh, I guess, sonically from, say, the New York scene comparatively to LA to Miami? Is there a different sound uh, in those regions? Which I, because I, I've, I know New York, I know Miami. I haven't really visited LA too much or dove deep into LA, but I could imagine th there may be different variants in sound in the, in the Latin music uh, scene. Is that the oh, case or? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, salsa was born in, 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 in the Caribbean in the biggest cities back in the day were Cali, Colombia, mm. New York, Puerto Rico. Uh, and so that New York scene was in its, it was hot. The music is hot in its, its play, you know. <laughs> like that, um, LA is, much more of a Mexican, you know, it's got a, such a huge Mexican base there. The beautiful mm. rancheras in, uh, in, in songs like that, you know, and the, the big ballads. Uh, so that was really interesting as well. And in Miami, you know, it's pretty much in line with New York. Yeah. yeah. Or in, uh, a lot of uh, Cuban. Uh, I, uh, Cuban music, uh, I assume, uh, of course, right? It, it's a big Cuban population down there as well. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're not, not, that's not to say there isn't uh, salsa and merengue and all that stuff in LA, but because all is so big, but yeah. really you know, the majority of Latin music is 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 Mexican based because Mexican Americans and people from Mexico, there's such a you know, it's, there's such a connection. Yeah, yeah. Did you have any uh, like mentors to to kind of help you? Um, along the way, like in LA or like in, down in Miami too, like that, like, or did you, did you really just pick up the sounds organically when you're out uh, being part of a scene and then interwove that into your own in, in style, or I guess. I always like to pick stuff up, but yeah, my 
first mentor, my second mentor, actually, uh, the first one was my dad's friend in Detroit, was Roy Eaton at Manhattan School of Music. Uh, mm. He was a Chopin expert. Uh, he's an amazing, and, and also he worked for Ad, he wrote jingles, he was, he's super creative. And, and I'm graduating, and I'm like, you know, uh, Roy, man, uh, you know, I got this idea, you know, but I'm really nervous about it. I want to say, why, Arthur? You know, you can do it. You can just just mix and everything. And I said, yeah, but you know, I love Latin music, but I'm a gringo. I, you know, I, was, <laughs> I, I, I have this idea, but is anyone else going to buy that idea? Mm. He like turns to me with this most serious look and says, Arthur, look at me. I'm, I'm a black pianist. I'm an expert in Chopin. And everyone told me I got to be playing blues and jazz when I was growing up with the talent mm. that I had. But my passion was classical music, in particular Chopin. Mm. And he was, although to forget, it's like burned into my my soul. He's like, you know, you've got to follow your soul. And th those words, you know, to this day resonate with me, you know, big time. Wow. Yeah, I was kind of curious, like how it, uh, the Latin community uh, received your mute your work too. Uh, initially, was there any like pushback or just like? just loved your music, so it didn't matter about being a gringo at the time. No, there, there definitely was pushback. <laughs> you know, one thing, you know, like, what have I learned in music over the years? I think number one is just because you have a record deal doesn't mean the next day you're gonna have a private jet waiting for you and uh, a private chef, and, you know, so I, I come here from LA, I get signed finally. Uh, my manager, I ran into this guy here and they called Fernand Martinez, and he was uh, Julio, um, I'm sorry, Enrique Iglesias' manager. Yeah, he, yeah, the architect of Enrique's career. So I sent him my things in Colombia. He looks at me, okay, yeah, yeah, now you're the gringo from Miami that plays Latin music. Oh, I can sell this, I can sell it. And he got me my deal on, on that in LA. So I'm so excited. You know, I go out to LA and I walk through the door thinking everyone's going to be like, and they're all looking at me like, ah, oh, this must be the new accountant. This is why, you know, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Robert, it was not the reception I was, I was, you know, I was hoping for. <laughs> yeah. And that first album tanked, it was called El Piano Amarillo. Um, mm. I did it with this producer called Julio Reyes, who's now won multiple Grammys, American Grammys, Latin Grammys. And it was his first album, my first album. And we just went for it. We did all this crazy stuff. And we went into a meeting and uh, <laughs> with the company with Phono Visa were there in LA. They're like, you know what? We're really on Mars with this project. Uh, you know, they, so <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy until my third album. Um, I wrote a song with Tito Nieves and the song went to number one. Mm, wow. That was, a, that was a game changer. Wow. But the first four, after, you know, six years trying to get, uh, unsuccessfully trying to get signed. And then four years, my third album, finally, I, you know. Yeah, wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, but you were you still, during that time, you were sustaining yourself through through music solely, correct? Sorry. Should I, or shall I make that assumption or did yeah, you have to do a side hustle or whatnot or no I know I I cool. you know I started playing gigs at 17 so I knew you know from Detroit it was it's pretty scrappy you know yeah. how to get you got to pick up the phone okay hey man I, I can do this you know uh and so that's what I did all through in LA I was working constantly I could work I could work seven days a week if I wanted and then even if I, after I got signed here for the first two years I'm like ah, you know, since they didn't give me the million dollar check I was expecting, I don't know what was wrong with them. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I was, I was doing doing gigs until finally, you know, I kept doing that and writing and writing and then doing studio work too. Lots mm. of studio work, you know, so. Yeah. Now, did you ever, uh, like during that time, did you ever travel to like Latin America, like South America, Mexico or the, the Caribbean and, and kind of pick up stuff uh, uh, through traveling too or? Yeah, I, I, traveling is one of my passions because you can learn so much, you know, with, you, photography, music. I, I mean, it's all related. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so uh, there's this uh, group called Grupo Nietzsche from Colombia. They're huge salsa, salsa band. I'd first seen them in New York. And so I, I had some friends in Colombia. So I decided, you know, I'm going to go visit Jairo Barea, the, the owner, you know, the founder of the group. So I went down there like 22 to Cali alone. And went to a studio and knocked on the door and you know I had, we had, had a couple of phone calls I had spoken with the secretary took me and he really became like my mentor for you know he was amazing okay here in Colombia here's how we play salsa here's how we do this and that and uh, and ironically now with uh, piano y mujer this new record uh, one of my good friends is Gojo she's a, a singer from Colombia wow. Gojo is his much younger cousin 
Isn't that crazy? I, I didn't, when I met Gojo, we just had this, in, this chemistry. Yeah, and yeah. We got to talk in it, you know, we turned out that uh, her older cousin was this, you know, this here, one of my heroes. Wow, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Small, wor small world. Uh, uh, wow, wow. Um, okay, wow. I, sorry, man. <laughs> I'm just like, once again, I, I kind of just hit a wall sometimes. But um, so, Okay, I guess, uh, so you're new, what, I guess what's your, what are you working on now or what's out now, uh, if we can uh, discuss that too, like, it, it's piano, I, I, I'm i terrible at pronouncing uh, I, uh, Spanish, so I, I, I did study abroad in Costa Rica and they tried to teach me Spanish down there and uh, I couldn't pick it up, uh, but um, <laughs> you're, you you're have, new, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Did you have a Costa Rican girlfriend? No, I just studied abroad. Uh, <laughs> that would have helped. That would have helped a lot. <laughs> that, that is true. That is true. <laughs> oh, but I love it down there. I love South America, or it's that was Central America per se. But oh, it was just it's such a friendly uh, culture. Um, and I love the food too. Uh, <laughs> and uh, but um, so your new stuff is uh, piano e new hair. I, I, I'm gonna butcher it. Piano and Woman. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it's in my second uh, album with Sony. Um, it's an HBO special as well. It's on it right now on HBO Max. And, you know, while the title was born last year, in the, like in the middle of the pandemic, you know, for me, I fell in love with that concept of just pure piano and, and woman's voice. When I started playing, you know, pro in Detroit, you know, weddings, uh, bar mitzvahs, parties, anything. And a lot of times the agency would like, okay, Arthur, they don't have the budget for the whole band. So, we're going to send you and your piano in the female vocals. Yeah. Me and the female vocals, hundreds of, you did the cocktail party, then they want a special performance there, you know, all kinds. So I love that format. It's just so pure and intimate and you can, you know, you can create, you can make a synergy. It's, it's not like me accompanying, it's us together. That's something larger than just the, you know, the sum of the two parts. Hmm. And so then when the pandemic hit and all of a sudden there were no concerts, there were no airplanes. And I'm like, all right, now's a perfect time to, to really start, you know, focusing on, yeah, piano in the hair. Wow. Um, <clears throat> how how how? Part of me. How has the the reception been on uh, about the special uh, regarding HBO Max? Has it everything been positive, or has it been you know uh, a great? Uh, I don't. Sorry, I, I can't work. <laughs> um, has it been a? Uh, at, has there been positive reviews, I guess, of the special, or have you gotten positive feedback from that as well? The feedback's been unbelievable, um, much better than we thought. You know, we were going into this you know, uh, last year, okay, we'll just do the piano and, and, and the vocals separately. Then I hooked up with Motif, my, the producer and a great friend. He's also Mark Anthony's uh, head songwriter and head producer. And we're like, you know, yeah, there's a pandemic, but we got to be just live. We got to get the, the, the women here, you know, Gojo was in Colombia, Natalia was in Mexico, uh, Connie was in Puerto Rico, but they all came there and, you know, not many people were in the studio because of COVID. So we had unlimited time. Yeah. Normal sessions, three, four, five hours. We had like three days for each one to wow. really dive deep into different ideas and and so, yeah, so we did, we were like halfway through the album when we presented the idea to, um, to HBO and they said, you know, we've never done anything like this, but we love it. And they, uh, you know, they, they said they were down. So we did the album that we filmed in October last year, the special, mm. uh, and it came out um, a couple of months ago. It's, it's a two year license, so we're super happy. Cool, no, that's amazing. Congrats, because that's, um... Yeah, that's cool. No, just have a HBO special out there, and yeah, it, and it's cool. Um, oh man. Uh, so I guess like I don't know what keeps you. I, I guess keeps you, you know, going with it through. Yeah, and, you know, through your career, you've accomplished a bunch. But like, what keeps you continuously to create? I guess I always kind of ask an iteration of this because I'm always curious. How do you maintain that energy of and passion and love for the the art, because sometimes like I've hit in walls in in blocks with my stuff, and I'm like, should I walk away or? Yeah. Ha have you always had this constant energy and and just flow? I guess would be the question. I just like to. I just you know I'm super curious 
about all kinds of all things artistic, you mm. know, uh, in different cultures and uh, what the, where the music comes from. And and the piano is a, a type of instrument. Um, you know, a lot of okay. There's the melody. This is the piano version of the melody, or whatever. But for me, you know, it's much. This is much more than, you know, uh, to interpret a melody. To me, it's a, it's a vehicle. Mm. I always think, how can I transport people to, you know, maybe another place, another time? How can I tie this in with something else? Uh, do something that's never been done before. Um, before this, when I was at Universal, I did a, a PBS special called Encanto del Caribe, which we filmed at a castle in Puerto Rico. Wow. And uh, it's like a national heritage site. It was amazing. They let us, they let us do it. But I, got, I called Mark Anthony, who I know really well, and Laura Bossini from Italy. And the same thing, I was like, okay, what can I do that's different? We can, all right, we'll turn this castle into a soundstage, which is basically what we did. And we got a 40 piece orchestra uh, and, you know, PBS was behind the whole thing. And it, it was amazing. So yeah, I just, you know, I'm always thinking when I get up, like, what can I do that's different? Pretty much, I guess that's it. Yeah, yeah, but I, it it feels like you've just had this constant energy of just I have to create, 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 and it's just I just from the screen right now or Zoom, I feel like you you never stop creating. Like for me, like sometimes for me, it's like I've just had a trudge through days of like I don't want to create, but I have to. But um, I, I feel like. It, uh, I read your energy right now. It's just like, I feel like it, it came so natural to to yourself to flow. You ever have these like kind of creative blocks or is yeah, that, course, yeah. Ones, you know? Yeah, definitely. And you just have to fight through them, uh, you know, um, especially starting, you know, it's in music in, in any arts. It's like, no is the easy, you know, people say to that to you all the time. And uh, one thing I also learned is that <laughs> Now, uh, the word no doesn't exist. When someone says no, all that means is, is not right now. You know, and it used to be, and I'd work like for months on a demo and a guy would listen to it for five seconds and say, nah, that's not what we're looking for. And I'd be like, oh, how can you say that? You know, and, <laughs> but um, I, that keeps me hungry too. Just th remembering those days of, you know, what it was like uh, yeah. in this. And also keeping in mind too, it's really interesting in, in music. Like say there's a hit album out. And the label will say, okay, let's just do something like that. You know, they've been working on this album for one year. So, and so then by the time you start like copying it, then it takes you almost a year. Mm -hmm. So then you're two years behind of someone of an idea. So, so that really scares me, that the thing of falling behind. I, I gotta stay above, how can I stay above it? What can I do that's different? Yeah, yeah. Now, actually, what can you do that's different? Like, where do you see, where? What other influences uh, or so of sound can you add to your, your your music? Or I guess, is there another like genre where you, you'd like to experiment with too, to incorporate on top of all, all this complexity at, as is, or? Well, I'm you know, fascinated with Latin rhythms, whether it be uh, flamenco from Spain or huapango from Mexico or salsa, merengue. Uh, right now, um, you may have heard, you know, know Carlos Vives, he's a Colombian, uh, amazing Colombian uh, singer. Uh, we're doing a, a collab together and he's always talking about how cumbia, the music, you know, like from Colombia is the blues, is their blues. Yeah, yeah. You know, hundreds of years old. So we're going to do this crazy thing, mixing cumbia with Detroit blues. Oh, and wow. So, yeah. That's, that's cool, man. <laughs> so I'm really excited about that. And <laughs> yeah, this, you know, uh, a year and a half ago, I did a, a collab with Orishas, they're a, a, a Cuban group. Hmm. And we did a, like a hip hop song with a piano and we filmed a video in Havana, which was pretty cool. So it's, yeah, it's like, what, what, like, there's so much out there. What can I do? Like, how can I mix, you know? Yeah. I mean, like you've accomplished so much already. It, it's, um, is there anything like any dream, like performance you'd love to produce or like just a, a more of a, interesting space to, to perform or you know even like a maybe even an archaeological site like you know i could see a performance at uh, machu picchu a bit you know but um maybe uh, any big idea you haven't uh, i guess made it, it to reality at, at this time i guess if that's yeah like like that and there's uh you know music is, is so hard there's so many amazing musicians out there Mm. Uh, my first album with Sony was called Viajero, which means traveler. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I went to nine different countries uh, and just sought out musicians in each, you know, best musicians in Mexico, went to Rio de Janeiro, Argentina, Colombia, uh, uh, Italy, Spain, Portugal, uh, stuff like, and I found there, you know, there's so many talented, hugely talented people that you will never probably hear of uh, mm. that I think they need to be heard. And, you know, what can we do? What can we do together? You know? Mm. Hmm. I could see, yeah, that, like if somebody could kind of record, you know, like travel and record all those folks and, and put them on like a database or, or on the web or, you know, or curate, you know, uh, you know, CDs or whatnot, not CDs, like, uh, like, uh, you know, make a, a produce a, a special kind of curation. That'd be, that'd be great. Sorry, I, I, I'm hitting like a blank sometimes. So forgive me if I, I'm kind of stumbling over my words a bit. Um, oh, no. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, what I was trying to say, it would be cool to have that, you know, multi, you know, like have a, a curation of uh, just unknown, you know, uh, local artisans in those types of regions and, and produce an album or so, or just like, several albums i i'm sure there's too many people out there to count to even like um you know even to have just on a two disc album but uh interesting yeah no i i miss travel uh talking yeah. about travel i'm like i've been just kind of stuck here for 18 months I mean, most people have you know and i miss miami too but uh ah uh, i guess uh wait where do you go from here? I guess like I know I asked like any big question, like the the big project idea. But um, where do you I, I do you have like a you know any new works? And I know you have the the current album out and the the, the HBO special, I guess. But um, uh, where do you, I don't know? Do you have anything down the line now? A pipeline of live performances, I guess, or has all live performances kind of been nixed still? Um, how's that aspect, like the live performance aspect? There we go. Yeah. Well, they're coming back. We were, we're signed actually to do Piano y Mujer uh, for the tour starting in the US. Oh, cool. Uh, in LA, uh, New York, Puerto Rico, Miami, Chicago, and I think there's a couple other places. It was supposed to be in October, November, but thanks to lovely Delta, it's been pushed back to uh, the first quarter of next year. Hmm. But we're down for that. So, you know, we're starting to rehearse for that. I'm doing a, a Christmas special, which is really interesting with a bunch of artists. Uh, that's going to be HBO, uh, not HBO, uh, Facebook is going to, we're doing a deal with Facebook. Wow. And it's going to be live, live streaming. Um, and I'm working on my new album with Sony. So, oh, cool. you yeah. know, I'm here uh, in my studio and in, in the midst of COVID, but, but, but just re re recording and recording away. Wow. Yeah, no, <laughs> nonstop. Once again, <laughs> that energy, it's like, I need that energy here because I've been, well, it's been hard on a, like a photographer who captures live performances initially. Yeah. Uh, um, so that, that hit me hard where I was just, can't do that project. But I, I, that allowed me to expand this conversation series, to, well, particularly via Zoom because I could reach out to people who I've never would have access to if I was just going on site with my camera, you know, but I do miss the, the going to live performances and, and going backstage and that energy I miss myself, but. It's the same thing, me too. And uh, last year, like starting in May, I said, all right, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna start working on this album. But in the meantime, I started doing these happy hours, you know, these streaming. Yeah. And the first one was like 2000 people. Then it was like five and then it was like a hundred because everyone was home drinking <laughs> like every Friday night. But you know, you sit there and you're playing. <laughs> And then you finish and it's like dead silence in your house. It, there's no, you know, it's like. Yeah, there's, there's no, no transference of energy, one would say, between performer and audience, correct? Yeah, exactly. There's no, there's, there's none of that, which, uh, you know, all of us, you know, what we do, you know, we, we, that's what we do it for, you know, for that inter interaction. And so <laughs> can't wait till it comes back. Now, have you ever worked with um, dancers? I, I, because I feel like dance could go hand in hand with, with your what you're you're producing right now, or have been working on. But you know, I haven't. But that's a uh, really interesting idea. I've done video, you know, 
most of my videos have dancers in them, but it's like video, you know, <laughs> dancing. Yeah. What, what yeah. You're talking about, yeah. You know, it'd be cool to maybe do some improvising with uh, with dance or do some kind of thing like that. Because music and dance into Latin culture go hand in hand. I, uh, you know, I, it, like you said, salsa, merengue, you know, and it's, uh, it's all movement, body movement. It's just a full body movement. And actually, I've been capturing. Um, I started to start. Uh, I started to capture ballet and, and dancers myself. With the, I, I've been fortunate to uh, start volunteering at the Culture Lab in Long Island City um, over the summer, and they have a outdoor performance space. And I, I, I was, I've been lucky enough to meet so many amazing performers. I'm like, yes, I need to get back out, kind of shoot at least outdoor performances, and I, I've kind of connected with a. a second violinist of uh, the New York City Ballet and he and his partner have a uh, uh, his partner hosts a uh, generally a, um, a higher ground festival in northern Manhattan generally uh -huh. and dur during COVID they had it at their house uh, they have like a roof deck kind of open space and it's beautiful and I was I had the uh, opportunities to capture all these beautiful dancers and the and and I was like yes because and it's so much to capture and dance, you know, that I can't capture with just like, I have the, you know, I, I guess that the the equation for capturing a musician, you know, like maybe the upshot of the guitar or, yeah, you know, yeah. solo, sax solo or the, the piano. I, I know the, the stage performance for, you know, musicians and how to capture that. But with dance is, it brought another le level to what I want to capture with the, and, and the beauty of it paired with music, I'm like, whoa, I need to start exploring this comparably to just like rock and straight rock and roll or like indie rock. So I've, I've started to expand into capturing dance and exploring music paired with dance and like ballet and stuff like that. So I could, I could perfectly visually see it uh, uh, or, you know, uh, see so yourself uh, kind of partnering with a uh, you know latin dancers and I, I could see that as a big production too but hey if you do that i i, I do want some <laughs> credit for it no <laughs> but hey, be your royalty <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah exactly exactly but um yeah uh, because yeah no so i i guess that was more of a a rant uh, <laughs> than a question, but um, I guess anything else like uh, I haven't touched upon. I I mean, or anything you want to discuss or ch just chat about. I like I, my I'm kind of hitting a wall, so I'm sorry about uh, that. But um, any dream uh venue you haven't performed yet or any country you haven't performed yet that you'd love to at least oh god where have i been <laughs> so yeah, yeah yeah uh you know i just people ask me that a lot you know what's what's next yeah i know there's something out there you know it's for me you know i'm super optimistic the world's full of, yeah there's lots of bad but there's lots of magic out there too especially yeah. in the arts it's all over the place yeah so my next project it's going to be magical i hope uh i just don't know what it is yet but i know when i'll know it when i see it you know yeah. i just have to keep digging and keep digging and digging and i'm going to italy and finally uh five weeks from now if everything stays the same and i'm going to be uh you know playing with some musicians there and uh and so we'll see what comes next yeah and actually, I always love to ask this kind of question too. Like, are you like influenced outside of uh, the music scene? Are you uh, influenced by, like, say, visual arts or fine arts or anything else uh, externally outside the, the the realm of music? I'm or super. It... Uh, see, yeah, uh, uh, influenced by by images. Mm. Now, there's they're really. Uh, you know, I don't draw or paint. That part of my brain does not work. But I can look at something and and see and um, and, and play it. You know, I'll try to play and create a story. And it's amazing. You know, the whole thing. I'm sure you know this. The impressionist and the French impressionist started with painting. And all these musicians and the painters hung out together every night. 
Hmm. It's, inter- it's, it's the same thing. You know, when something, someone paints something and someone plays with the guy's painting, it's like this. You know, there's flashes and, and I think in colors a lot too, you know, like certain songs are very blue. Some songs are red, some songs are, you know, it's, it's so, they're so related. It's, it's like, it's, it's amazing. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, I never would have guessed, like, you so, taking that visual, you know, uh, information and, and putting it into sonic, um, I, you know, a, a sound, um, audio, I guess. Yeah, audio uh, yeah. medium, I guess. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Tripping over my words, but... Uh, yeah, really interesting. Um, and I guess I, I I wouldn't want to take too much more of your time, but uh, I I guess uh, for just lack of my brain kind of just hitting a wall, <laughs> I would love to. Uh, I'm I'm sure I, I've I yeah I would go deeper or somehow like miss questions. I would love to just rap about, but. I, I'm hitting uh, I'm, myself. I'm just kind of hitting a wall. So apologies on my end um, for being a bad host. <laughs> oh, you're great. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, uh, so if uh, people should check out, I, I, I'm once again, I cannot pronounce um, your new album and your new special. It's piano e muher. Muher. I you think ha- think like M O O H A R E in English. Oh, muher, er, mu, muher, muher, muher. You got it. Yeah, like yeah. move the cow in your hair. Muher. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Because I I I can never roll my R's. You know, I can never. Do, I was so I was always terrible at. I I always butcher uh, any type of Spanish. I <laughs> so uh, <laughs> um, so. People should check out. That's also a new album, right? Or that's your current album, correct? Also it's paired an, with the special. Yeah, it's also the HBO Max special. Okay. Which is streaming on HBO, you know, twenty four seven for the next couple of years. Cool. So we're happy. Oh, that's amazing! You have the couple year license here or a, agreement. And um, where could we check out uh, that documentary? By the way, too. Um, via. Uh, be a you know, traveler that's uh yeah. yeah it's on all the platforms as well you cool. know there's videos and yeah tons of behind the scenes you know yeah. <laughs> and some dive bar in mexico playing with some guys and two in the morning and, and Liz- lisbon playing uh <laughs> all kinds of stuff <laughs> yeah oh i i definitely have to check that out um and uh well, I guess one last question, kind of wrap up. Any advice to younger musicians or piano players or, or uh, musicians that, that kind of want to cross uh, sounds and, and mix their own, make their own uh, path regarding, um, you know, the journey, yeah, I guess. Definitely. Just, just two things. Um, you know, first of all, what I've learned, people especially in this country, they like to put you in a little box, you know, okay, you're the white guy, you can do rock, and you're the black, black guy, oh, you're blind, great, now you can do, you know, <laughs> or you're Latin, so let's play this, but the world's not, as you know, it's not like that at, at all anymore, everything's mixed, so just keep exploring, and, and also what we mentioned, we touched on earlier is that, you know, the word no does not exist, when anyone tells you no, just think, Okay, not right now. That's all that means is not right now. Mm. Maybe six m- months from now, you get it's the same. You have the same idea, and there's a different perception around you or the, the situation, and and stuff happens. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, Arthur, uh, pardon me, Arthur. Uh, thank you so much for uh, chatting with me and allowing uh, almost an hour of your time um, to converse about craft and. Um, Hopefully I didn't kind of butcher things too much because my mind's a bit sleepy, but uh, um, it was a pleasure uh, being introduced to yourself via Zoom. Awesome, Robert. Yeah, and hopefully we can do it. I'll see you live and you snap some pictures and play music and in front of a real crowd. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, I'm looking forward to your stuff uh, or exploring deeper uh of of what's out there already, but I'm also looking forward to see you know seeing streams of you performing live or 
you know, just going out there, you know, hopefully, you know, by next year. So looking forward to uh, diving deeper into your work. Awesome. Awesome, Robert. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Take care. Have a great afternoon. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.